Did anyone like not install it? As yet. All right. So, sir, I have not done, um installed it as yet. You have any issues installed it, or you just had didn't get get around to it yet? I didn't get around as yet. Please do it. The semester is yeah. almost over, so we'll just. Yes, I think the last day is the night, so we'll have class Friday, as well as Monday and next Friday. I don't know about the last week if we'll have class, but I think we can cover most of what multi-sim is capable of in just a few classes because it's it's fairly simple software. It, of course, it can be very advanced. They can do very technical things, but I just want to give you guys the basic introduction, building circuits, maneuvering, changing different uh, the values of different components, and just doing some basic simulations for circuits. And I think we can accomplish that in just three or four classes, right? So everyone should download multi-sim and install it. Yeah. So since you guys haven't played around with it at all, quickly, just take a few minutes, right? Come up here. The corner you should have multi sim open by the way and following along if you can or just follow along with me then after i finish talking then open up and then maneuver around. right so you this here is the schematic window up here we have some basic tools right some basic tools like multimeters oscilloscopes almost everything you'd find in a well-packed electrical engine slash electronics lab here we have like the components bar. And this is the same bar you'd find in most software as file, edit, view, where you can change full screen mode, zoom in, zoom out, right? Options to do your different settings, right? You can come to shoot properties, change up this interface a little bit. It should be pretty straightforward for most people, right? Okay, good. Now here, they got some other different options to simulate is when after you finish building a circuit, you come here, click run. If you want to do some sort of special type of analysis or simulation, you come into to there, right? To analysis and simulation, and you do all the different special types. You talk about the regular interactive, the DC operating point, the DC sweep. I'll briefly go over them again because you guys didn't have the software last time. Right? And in here, place is where you can place components. This is where all the different components are, the resistors, the diodes, the capacitors, the inductors. As well, you can just right click and click place component, which will carry you to the same thing where you can look for all the different resistors and whatever, all right? <coughs> Good. So let's just do back the circuit from last class and you guys can try it out if you haven't already, okay? So first we need just um, sources, power sources. So you come into your database collection here, right? It should be by default to all groups, master database, right? All groups, you come in, you click sources. There's some others, there's basic, which gives you basic stuff like resistors, capacitors, inductors and stuff. Sources gives you power sources, current control sources, like these you would remember from your uh, circuit analysis class, right? Different things like that, as well as there's like a diode section, all the different types of diodes, Zener diodes. I don't know whether or not you guys covered that in, in electronics as yet, but like Zener diodes, fast switching diodes, photo diodes, all, all kinds of different things like SRC, right? So you can look to that. There are of course transistors, right? The regular BJTs. There should be some FETs in here as well, right? So pretty much all the electronic devices you would want to simulate. Now, the reason for simulation software is so that we can really design and simulate and test out all these different parts without having to buy them. So imagine if you want to test out a particular part and you want to test out quite a few of them from different manufacturers, different sources, different values, right? Because you're designing, you might want to wide range of resistor values, a wide range of uh, diode values with different ratings, different temperature tolerances, all these things, right? You might want, you might be end up spending, you know, millions of dollars buying all of these different electrical components, right? Or electronic components. 
So the purpose of the simulation software is just to have them here in a quote unquote spice model, right? A spice model just represents all, all the different um, rating qualities, coefficient qualities, and how the devices um, operate electronically. That's what a spice model is. This software holds all of these models for the different components in so that we can drag and drop them and put them into a circuit and do simulation. So we can simulate for hundreds and thousands of different parts without actually owning the parts. And then after we finalize our design, then we can go ahead and buy the parts that we need or order it from whatever company, okay? And this is especially true for people that work in a large engineering industries, right? You're designing something for a spaceship, you're designing something for a car, right? You, you, you're gonna wanna test all sorts of different parts from all different manufacturers, right? So you want to just do some simulation to narrow down the number of parts you need, and then maybe try two similar parts from two different manufacturers and uh, physically out and then finalize your design. So that, that essentially is just the purpose, all right? Yeah. So we're in this master database, all groups here. You can click on that drop down. We can go to sources. In sources, we're going to find power sources. From the power sources, since we want just a simple DC resistor circuit to basically just review what we did last class, right? <coughs> and go ahead and click that, and then click OK, and it'll attach to the cursor, right? So when I move the cursor, we move. now we can click it, and where we click, that it'll drop that power source there, and it'll take us back to our menu. Right, so the power source is there on our schematic window. Now we want other components as well. So we can go ahead and find those other components. We also want resistors. Right, so back in from here, it's not sources, basic. Right, we come down here and click resistor. It's a bit down resistor. And then we just want some, some different resistors. Let's try it. What we did last time was 2K and I think 2K. So we can go ahead and do that again. So 2K, just type 2K there and I'll search for that. That's okay, I mean, you can just place this anywhere we want, right? And then we just do two one case. So come here, just type one, and it'll show up one K. If we just type one without the K, it'll show up all the different resistor values that have one in, the, in its name, right? In its value. So we do one K, one K to get the one K version, right? Now here, we kind of want to rotate a little bit because we want our lines to come in and then branch off. So we can do Control R right, to rotate the resistor around while it's still attached to the cursor. It's a Control R and we rotate it around. Then we can just drop that there. Then we just press OK again because we want another 1K. We can rotate it again and drop that there. Now, if you place it regular horizontally, you can click on it. And then here you can do flip horizontally, flips it that way, flip vertically, flips it one way. You can rotate 90 degrees, that kind of rotates it that way as well, right? So you can rotate 90 degrees clockwise and rotate 90 degrees anti-clockwise to get it back the same way, okay? So in case you, you can just drop it horizontally and then rotate it around to fit your needs, okay? Then to wire up, after we just have our components, we just wire up by simply clicking on the open end of our source of, or of our component, clicking on it and then dragging to the other point that we want to connect. So that's just dragging wires. Your cursor should automatically switch to a wire. So we drag and connect up our circuit. And then if we want to like here, you see it automatically kind of finds the shortest path keeping it square. So if you wanna kind of have some room down here, we can click to make a lower angle and then drop it as well, okay? So you kind of just come down and click here and come across to make it not just go straight across, but have some space. Let me just join this up, yeah. Okay, now, even though it's set right now, we can still move around certain things within the line and it'll adjust the lengths of the lines as needed. Right. 
so you can just have things set up a certain way. Okay, good. <coughs> so try this out yourself. Just drag and drop some components, place them. Take two minutes, and if you need any help, let me know. You can share your screen, and I'll look at you do it and I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. All right? So just take a few minutes and do that. So how are you getting numbers one, two, and three down in red? Oh, okay. So I have that set up in my settings. So you come to options, sheet properties, and then net names, click show all, and the numbers for the node should come up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, does it work? Yeah, it works. Okay. okay. Now, um, this circuit also needs to be grounded, right? So you can come here, click this ground symbol. These are just some quick shortcuts to, to different areas, right? Basic, place basic, right? You can just come in here and it already opens up the basic component part, right? Instead of having to navigate, you can click on the ground and it opens up the sources window. So in here, this sources <coughs> is ground, AC power, DC power, digital ground, which is a bit different. And then there's regular ground, which is what we want. So regular ground. So I click OK and then just stick it at the bottom there. Put there, you can just put it here. OK, good. And your nodes will automatically change as well. Where did you get those resistors from again? Okay, so come up here, place component here, right? Or right click, place component, right? In the master database, right? It'll this is how this is how it will be by default. Come in to group, click basic, right? And in here, down in here, there's resistor, right? And let me just, there's resistor, right? This is how you'll see it. Then you can scroll through. However, that's pretty long. So I just recommend typing 1K 
is kind of like searching for the component and one K should pop up there. Get a resistor. And then you just click okay and it attaches the cursor and you can just place it wherever you want to place it. All right? Okay, sir. Also, you can come here over to the side and where the, the ground symbol is, there's also place basic next to that. Next to that as well, there's like this little squiggly line. You can click that and it'll take you here. And then you click resistor and 1K and do your thing, All right? One more thing, sir. How do you have a design toolbox on your side? This? You don't have this? No. All I have is the page in the corner, sir. What page? This, this but, page? That's the white page, yeah. Oh, well, this is just the file I opened. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think you can uh, view. Start as a design toolbox here. So if I unclick this, it disappears. Come back to view, click design toolbox, and it pops up. So this is just like files. For one design, you might have a bunch of files attached to it. So let's say, for example, I also want a breadboard file. So this is design one, which is this. So I want to attach a breadboard file, right? And let's just close it off. No, we not really. We don't really want to do that. You see, creates a, a breadboard design for me, right? Creates so another you, file. So you basically have that there because you're opening a file. Well, it depends if you have a display, right? Depends if you have a display. I don't know what the default setup is for multisim. So hey, yeah, just sir, at any time, click you have... and click design toolbox. Yeah. Will we ever have to practice with the Arduino? For for here, for multi sim. Uh, for the course. Yeah, you want to learn. So for multi sim, for um, Arduino simulations, generally I use a uh, Tinkercad. Right. So this is just something I have set up with an Arduino and a keypad. Some simple simulation. This is what I was doing. And there's some error in my code somewhere. Anyhow, let me just go to Tinkercad right there. Right? But this is just tinkercad.com. You can sign up, create an account, then you can create some circuits or whatever. All right. So, so we can buy the board. Need to buy the board? Yeah, if you want it in physical. Yeah, physically. Physical. But this here is you can sim simulate it with tinkercad.com here. Like you can just start search Arduino. Right. So you can drag out an Arduino. And then you can connect up a wire, right? Connect up different wires and all that all that stuff. And then you can search like LEDs, drag out an LED. Here I have some seven second display, this shift register chip. I don't think you guys know what a shift register is. And then I connect up to my Arduino and have some code here running. So Arduino dra drags on a lot of the concepts you guys know already. So some coding concepts are gonna come back when you wanna do Arduino as well as the electronics concepts, right? Right, the electronics concepts. So if you wanna do, you wanna learn Arduino, I recommend coming to tinkercad.com, setting up an account, right? And playing around with it. But this is fairly simple to use, nothing fancy about this, right? It's, it's kind of like real life. You just put a board, drag an LED, click, click, connect up the LED here. The ground, the ground, and that's it. Like that's it, and then you write your code to blink your LED or whatever, right? 
So if you want to learn about that, you can just come to tinkercad.com, check it out. But again, there's nothing special about it. It's it's fairly easy, very straightforward to use. If you can use multi-sim, then you definitely can use that. All right. Okay. So is everyone here at this point where we have this, uh, yes, this sir. simple circuit? Yes, sir. Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay. Okay. So we have a simple circuit. Let's quickly review the two things that we did. Right? So you can just do regular simulation. And what this, this does, this is kind of like turning the circuit on. Before, it's just a schematic. Now when we press play, it's simulating. Current is flowing from this battery or from this DC source around the circuit. Right? You can change this to 24 volts. So we get the same value as last class, right? And you, we can attach certain things, right? We can attach something like a multimeter and we can use it the same way we'd use a physical multimeter connecting up bleeds. Click on it. Multi, you'd have to turn that dial on your multimeter, right? So we turn it to voltage, DC voltage, right? So when we press play, this here is going to display the same value a multimeter would display, right? Because that's what this, right? And then, of course, you can check for different voltages. You just need to connect it up to different places, like here. And that should give us 24 volts. So the reason for that is because it's, it's essentially connecting to the battery, right? There at there and here. So that gives us 24 volts. So it's just a multimeter, right? The same way a physical multimeter works, same way this one works. So you can just go ahead and connect that out. And there are also some other tools which have different purposes, function generators, generate functions. So you have to come in, you can set the hertz and whatever. You'd have to know how a function generator works to use it, of course. Watt meter is, of course, to collect in the voltage and the current and to get your watt. The same way a watt meter would work. Well, so there oscilloscope, right? The oscilloscope. That one is, let me. Different oscilloscope. Okay, so there's only this one. Oh yeah, there's the four channel one and then there's the, uh, the regular one. This is the regular one. So this one for like maybe AC signals or DC signals, you can just go ahead and connect it up. So let's just connect it up. This here we know should give us that 24 volts. And this here we know should give us that, that 4.8 volts. Since we just measured, it's DC, so you won't see anything special, right? But I can just bring it out to give you guys an example, right? So it's channel A and channel B. So the divisions. So you see um, here, it's essentially just kind of like a graph for your oscilloscope, right? It's just a graph. The divisions on channel A are set up at 10 volts per division. So this here is 24 volts. So it's like one square, two square, half a square, so it's like 24 volts in terms of divisions, right? And that's essentially it. It works the same when oscilloscope works. The smaller voltage here is on a five volts per division, or you can turn it up to the same 10 volts so that they match, scale-wise they match. So this here is, is much lower at four volts, right? Which is kind of like a little less than half of the division, right? And, and that's all there is to it. You can click reverse here, kind of change it to white if you prefer white. Um, there's AC and DC coupling, right? Which you'll learn about, I guess, in different electronics classes as you go, right? So it, it essentially has all those basic features of a regular oscilloscope, just to read different ways. Again, this is just a DC. A DC circuit, so there's nothing special going on, not, no kind of waves or anything going on that we need to look at. 
right? So that's the regular sales score. Uh, bring up back the sales score for again. Just take it. Let me see. Okay, good. No, how? Yeah. No, how yeah. did you bring it out? Where you got to search from the database? Oh, so I you remember the site here has these different instruments. So you just come down and you'll see oscilloscope and then click it and I'll come here. Oscilloscope. Also, you can come to place, place component. Uh, no, it's it's not in there. It's uh, simulate instruments. And then here from here, you can click uh, oscilloscope. It's not really like a component, it's more of an instrument, like has something that we use for the simulation or the analysis. So in simulate instruments, you come down in here and they have all sorts of different things, right? The multimeter, the oscilloscope, the logic analyzer, if you're doing like AND gate stuff, spectrum analyzer, yeah, word generator again, if you're doing, you know, digital electronics kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You find it? Yep, I got it out. I'm going to connect it now. Yeah, and, and that's pretty much it for the oscilloscope. There are other tools, and they're like niche tools if you're doing some particular kind of electronics, digital or network spectrum frequency analysis, stuff like that. <laughs> right? Just, uh, yeah. So the analysis and simulation. So when we press run, essentially what we're doing is that basic simulation that just turn the circuit on, power it up, and if things are connected to it, then great. They display the values on the multimeter on the oscilloscope. It's kind of like just running the circuit, right? It now another thing we can place is a probe. As I said last class, the voltage probes. So you can practice try placing probes, voltage probe, press play. It'll do the same thing that the multimeter would do. Right? It'll just do the same thing that the multimeter would do or the oscilloscope would do, right? Just basic stuff. giving you those voltages. And there are all kinds of different kinds of probes, um, voltage, current, differential voltage, which is voltage compared to another voltage, right? Voltage and current. So maybe on one particular point, you want voltage and current. So you can go ahead and collect that, right? Just delete those. Very good. So now for the analysis, right? In simulate, there are different types of simulations we can run. Right, so analysis and simulation. The basic one we do is just turning the circuit on, right? That interactive simulation where you put things across your multimeters and your oscilloscopes and stuff, or your probes and whatnot. You just have them there, right? And for that, just, just like how Simulink and MATLAB would run up to a stop time, right? It, it would be like, Something like here, the value is 10 seconds, right? 10 seconds, 10 seconds, right? But by default, multi-sim has a really big value, which is one times e to the 10, which is just scientific notation for one with 30 zeros at the end, right? 30 zeros at the end. So by default, this thing runs for a really long time. And of course, if for some reason your circuit is choppy, multi-sim does a really good job of get, making sure that your outputs are nice and smooth, right? So you can just leave everything automatic. But if for some reason you get like a choppy sine wave, the same way we would get in Simulink, that choppy sine wave, like you're, you're expecting some sort of smooth sine wave, but you get like a choppy thing, right? Right. And you want to smooth it out. You want to smooth it out. You can just come in and do that maximum step size thing, right? That, that we talked about in, in Simulink and MATLAB. 
right down maximum step size. So you can change that. And, and that's pretty much it for the interactive simulation. Now DC operating point is the one you would use to solve the different values in a circuit. So the value that we're gonna get out is either like a current I, 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 a power or a voltage or something like that, right? You don't really want resistance because your resistor is there and it's measured, right? Like, you know, that's a two kilo ohm resistor, you know, that's a one kilo ohm resistor, right? But maybe you might want the current through R1. So that, that's symbolized as IR1. So we do, you click on it, right? You click on it and then you click add so that when you run the simulation, it's gonna output those values for you, right? So let's say we want the current through all three resistors. We just click on them and send add and send them over. Then we click run, right? And we see that the current through R1 is 9.6 milliamps m means milli milliamps and r2 and r3 is 4.8 which makes sense which makes sense because here some current is coming and then that current is split evenly split evenly between two equally sized resistors so 9.6 split evenly is 4.8 4.8 right splits evenly so it makes sense so try out the DC operating point, again, simulation analysis, and try solving for different values, right? You can solve for the voltage and then comparing those values to values you get from your probes, right? And values you get from your multimeter and oscilloscope. Well, not oscilloscope, just multimeter alone, right? So just take another two or three minutes and do that. If you need help, you can share your screen and let me know, right? So you just come simulation, analysis and simulation, DC operating point, right? Sir, you want IR1. So, you solve for the variables you, you're interested in, right? So place your probes, right? Whether it's a current probe or a voltage probe, simulate, see what those values are, and then use the DC operating point to test those values and just verify, right? Or do so some if I put the so I if I put the probe at R3, I gotta pick R2 from the DC operating point, right? Yeah, you're just playing around, right? You're just comparing yeah. values. Because so I wanted to know which points you got to put inside the probe because I got a whole set. I didn't remember how many you call them. Place, right? Probe. You want yeah, I find it, sir. Right? Yeah, so current. You want current through R3, you just come here. Place it. Then when you press play. Actually, this is just a DC point analysis, so we we'll have to go back, simulate. Analysis and simulation, we'll have to go interactive, right? And then click run. And then we see 4.8, right? 4.8 for interactive simulation. And then you go back, you do your DC, you do your DC operating point, right? Click run and then compare, right? Compare to. So place different probes, different voltages, you know, solve everything you can solve for, right? And compare them with your different instruments, right? Your watt meters, and maybe a hand analysis as well, verifying that this thing works so that you understand how to use multi -sip. And if given a circuit, maybe from another one of your classes, that requires you to do some circuit analysis, but the circuit analysis isn't really important, like the teacher doesn't want you to solve the circuit. They kind of just want you to look at the circuit and you just don't have the time to do all the tedious calculations, right? You can just simulate it in multi-sim and pick out the values you want, right? Because this is just a simple resistor circuit. The circuit could be way more complicated and you don't have the time to do all the, all the calculations, right? You just kind of want to throw it up and run the simulation.
right? To practice pulling different values. And then we'll move on to the DC sweep. Okay, so any trouble? No. So that one's simple. Let's do the DC sweep now. 
then we can maybe build a rectifier or something like that. So analysis and simulation again, right? Come down to DC sweep. The voltage source we want to sweep is V1, right? This voltage source here, V1. We want to sweep it from zero volts to maybe 12 volts or 24 volts, depending on how high you want to go. Maybe 23 volts. This is the 24. And the increments, this is just, again, the resolution, right? You want to do 0, 0 0.5, so on, so forth. 1, 1 1.5, or do you want to do even smaller increments than that? It's up, it's up to you how small you want to do, right? Because when doing this DC sweep, maybe you have other components that are sensitive to small changes in the voltage then you would want to adjust this increment as needed by your design. Okay, good. And then after that, we also want to set outputs, right? Because we don't just want to sweep it, because if we just turn this thing on, we sweep it from zero to 24 volts, that's it, right? We want values to come out of that. We want to know how this current change as it sweeps, right? The current in R1, just this regular current. We want to know how V2 changes, which is the voltage at this point here. We know V1 is going to go from 0 to 24 volts, so there's no need to take that out, right? So we can just do V2. And every other parameter that you might be interested in, you can go ahead and check those as well. All right, so after this, we just click Run. And just like last class, a graph pops up with 0 to 24. And the values for I through R1, right? I through R1 and V2, eh? V2. Let me uncheck that and just do V2. So we see V2 climbs steadily from zero to about four point something volts, right? You can uh, press here, which is on the trace, this thing here, that'll pop the grid up. So it's about 4.8 volts, which is about the same what we measured with our multimeter, right? So you see it, it increases linearly, right? There's no kind of curve or anything like that, right? It's just a linear increase. Now, the, the scale isn't correctly set for the current. So let's just delete the voltage first, then plot the current again. All right. <clears throat> so simulate analysis and simulation. The output, let's delete the voltage. So just remove, send it back over this side. And plot the current a little. Now, current is fairly small, right? It's, it's like 9.6 milliamps. So in that, in that much larger scale, just now with the voltage, it would have looked really close to zero. So it kind of would look like it's just at zero. So we wouldn't get to see this, this linear increase the way it is now, right? So as you need different values and you need different graphs, you can go ahead and delete certain things, or you can superimpose them upon, on top of each other to get different graphs comparing it as long as their scale matches up, right? So be careful of where you're plotting together. The safest way is to just plot one thing at a time, right? But maybe you're plotting a bunch of voltages together that are in a similar range. So you can go ahead and plot those together. But voltages and current, the scales might, might mismatch. All right? So zero to 9.6, and we see it increases linearly, which is what we would expect, right? Okay, so try this now on your own. Again, simulate analysis and simulation, DC sweep, right? You set up the values, the parameters, and then set which outputs you want. Check, you can check the other values as well if you want, all right? And if you need any help, I'm right here.
to our finish. Okay, good. Anyone else finish doing this? Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right, let's move on. Let's try something different. Let's try designing a rectifier. You guys know what rectifiers are, right? Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay, who, who doesn't know what a rectifier is? Me, sir. Dawson. Okay. So a rectifier is a way of converting AC power to DC power, right? So we have some AC source and we want to convert it to a DC source to power our DC equipment, right? What we need to use to perform this middle step is a rectifier. A rectifier is one of the simplest AC to DC power conversion systems, right? So that's what a rectifier is. How it works on a basic level and the most simplest one is by using a diode, right? Uh, let me erase that. So yeah, AC to DC, we use a rectifier, right? Now, to build a rectifier, generally, the most basic one, we'd use a diode. You know what a diode is? No? I uh, heard about it before, sir, but never really did much research on it. Okay. Yes, sir. Maybe the mechanical students might be a little behind. I don't know. But you guys should have done electrical fundamentals. All right. Sir, does it allow current to flow in one direction or something? Yeah. So that is. So this here is your AC source. Uh, I should probably put a load here somewhere, some kind of load. What the diode does is it only allows current to flow in one particular way. An example of a diode is an LED. Okay, let me, oh, maybe we can just use multi-SIM to demonstrate. So we have some battery. Let's place a source that represents a battery, so some DC source. We don't want it too big, right? We want it to five volts, five volts. And we want to place an LED, right? So an LED is actually a diode, okay? An LED is actually a diode. The symbols are the same. And we want to put a resistor in series with that because with LEDs, you don't want to connect them straight to a battery because that kind of short, shorts out the thing and heats up the filament inside the LED, the thing that glows and it blows the LED. So we don't want to short, short the circuit out, right? We want a resistor to kind of control the flow of current. And so we want to place a resistor in there as well. Not 1K, maybe 220 ohms, should be fine. And you always wanna put in that, that ground, right? That, uh, that floating ground for your circuit. Now, if you press run on this, oh, it's a DC sweep again. Let's remove this circuit now. Simulate analysis and simulation. We switch it back to interactive simulation. Let's run. And we see here the LED is lighting up. The symbol for that is just this thing here, these arrows lit up. 
We can add a switch as well. So let's go ahead and add a switch. Component um, basic switch, right? Let's add a switch there. Drag the circuit out more, make some space. All right, so they're running, right? This is close the LEDs lighting. Open the switch, the LED turns on. It's it's the it's still simulating the circuit is still being powered, but pressing the switch turns the LED on and off, right? On and off, right? Good. Now the thing is, diodes. If we turn this the other way, so let's stop this. Let's delete these lines. And let's turn the diode the other way, right? So instead of going this way, it goes this way, right? The symbol is turned around. So let's connect it up. And sorry, join it. Join it there, right? So let's play. What happens is it doesn't light. And even when we close the circuit, it still doesn't light. So it doesn't matter where now we open this switch. It doesn't light, it doesn't flow current. So it, it accepts current one way, but it blocks current the other way, right? So with a DC source, that's great. It's gonna flow current. It's gonna make current flow, right? It's gonna flow. It's essentially gonna be a closed circuit. And if we turn it the other way, right? If we, let me clean up this drawing a bit. It doesn't look neat. Okay. When it's one way, it's gonna current is gonna flow, but if these polarities were reversed, current is not gonna flow, right? If it was essentially like this, right? If current is trying to come in this side, it's gonna block that current. It's gonna essentially be an open circuit. It's gonna resist that. So a diode allows current to only flow one way. Now we know with an AC source. the voltage or the potential difference is constantly changing, right? So DC on a graph looks something like this. And AC, let's say this is the zero line, the zero line. DC looks something like this and AC looks something like this, like a sine wave. Maybe we can just plot the sources on an oscilloscope and compare them. Okay, so sources, DC source there, AC source there. Okay, let's bring out an oscilloscope. These things aren't connected up to anything. Don't try this in the lab, right? And let's play. And so channel A, DC source is connected to, so let's scale that up a bit. Channel B, the AC source is connected to, and it's at 120 VRMS, right? So let's scale up a bit. Right. So we see the DC is like that line straight across. Let me reverse it so you guys, is that line straight across DC and AC is up and down, up and down. So essentially, if this here is the positive side, this is negative side being applied to this, right? So AC, the polarity is constantly switching from positive voltage to negative voltage causing this diode to only conduct half of the time, right? Causing this diode to only conduct half of the time. So if you want to build a rectifier, we can use a diode to conduct only the positive half. And that system is called a half wave rectifier. OK, 
Okay, so let's delete everything and let's build a halfway rectifier. And then we'll use the same oscilloscope. Use the same oscilloscope. We can use that 200 ohm for the load. Okay. So using this, we don't want to use an LED. We want to use an actual diode rated for these, these voltages, right? So we come in place, component, right? Diodes, regular diodes, and we come in. Because I've, I've done this circuit before in multisim, I know that a good diode to use is, is 1N. 4007 G. And if you read the description, it's just a one amp, 1000 volt standard rectifier, right? To do our basic things. We're not going to go over 1000 volts. So you don't need anything different. So this is just standard rectifier. So you can go ahead and pick the same one, or you can try with a different one and then swap it in with this one and use the scope to see the difference between the two. So if in class you're, you're being taught about a particular diode, you can go, you can simulate it and then compare it to another diode and see what the difference is. Difference is. So multi-sim can be used to teach yourself as well and experiment. All right. But I know for the bill rectifier, I can just go ahead and use this diode. All right, so let me just place that diode there. Okay. Have my load here. Let me rotate it. Go ahead, connect up the wires. And what should happen? You want to have that ground in as well. What should happen? It should it should conduct the positive the positive half of the wave and reject the negative half of the wave. So we need, we need an oscilloscope, of course, to see that. Oscilloscope, we can take the input waveform coming from these points here. I just connect it right here. And we can take the output waveform come from this point here, this point here, All right? Good, so. Okay, so when we press play, we can use the oscilloscope to see the waveform, right? So the diode is supposed to block the negative half and accept the positive half, right? Because it's lined up this way. Press play. Come in. We see a lot of things going on. Let's go ahead and, right, on, uh, on channel A. Remember, this operates the same way on oscilloscope it operates. So on oscilloscope, a physical one will have different knobs and buttons you can press to adjust the scale and the times and stuff like that, right? So let's turn off channel, channel B for now, and let's turn on channel A alone. So channel A is this first input waveform, right? Connected to channel A of the oscilloscope. And let's just adjust the scale so that we see it nicely. So we see this AC waveform, All right? We can change the time. so that we see clearly this AC waveform, okay? Now, let's turn channel A off and channel B on, right? Let's adjust the scale as well. Right. What we see is a waveform that's only the top half, right? So generally the waveform would be something like this. It would be the AC waveform, right? Up and down. But the, the diode is going to cut off the half, the bottom half. So these parts are going to be moved. So you're going to end up with something like wave blank, wave blank, wave blank. Only displaying that positive half, which is what we see happening here. Let's, 
right? Which is what we see happening here. Wave a blank piece, a missing piece, wave a blank piece, and see this. You can change that to white by clicking reverse. You can see it better, right? So this here, what we just built is a, is a half wave rectifier, right? So you guys can build it yourself, right? The tools are right here. The components are right here. AC, power source. This one N4007G diode. Just a regular 220 ohm resistor. You can change the values of, of this resistor if you want and your oscilloscope. Try and do this. And then you can say, hey, I built a rectifier and I know how to build a rectifier. All right, Dawson. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, so, sir, I had a question, right? Uh, is this similar to how the uh, phone charger would work? Well, a phone charge charger is, is slightly more complicated, but yes. Okay, so it's a similar concept for using the... Uh, um, the diode yeah, but, but a phone oh. charger has a lot of different things inside. It has like some coils and, and, and different things to break down the voltage, right? Remember, this is just a simple, this is like the generic operation of AC to DC conversion. Modern AC to DC conversion, as you guys will learn eventually, if you do electrical engineering, is way more complicated, right? So in, inside your little adapter, if you were to break one open, you'll see little coils in there. You'll see some, uh, some control, some, some control, little electronics, small sorts of little things, some capacitors maybe, you know, all sorts of different things that, that all serve different purposes, right? This is just the basic concept. And yes, you can say, this is how your phone charger would work, but it's, it's much more complicated for your phone char charger, right? Is your phone charger is this, this um, commercial product that people design and put effort into building, right? Thanks, sir. Because, uh, for example, Samsung chargers are one way and they output a particular voltage value, right? And uh, Apple chargers might be a bit smaller and output a different value. And OnePlus, you know, they might do some kind of fast charging so they need like more power. So their chargers are a bit different as well, right? Yeah, so, so modern AC to DC is, is not simple, but this is a simple thing you can do on your own. Okay? All right, yes, sir, thanks. Sir. Yep. Um, on the oscilloscope, the A probe is input. Under oscilloscope. Yeah, the A, the A probe. Is that the input probe? So A is channel A, and channel A, A has a positive and negative two probes, right? It's the same way like you would use a multimeter, two things that you usually just go and connect up. Um, generally, you don't need to connect up the negative one, but I like to do it, right? But essentially, you under A, that's channel A, and this is where you'd connect to that positive end, 
and the negative is where you connect up the ground, right? Channel B. So this is channel A, channel B, and channel A has channel A's input port, and channel B has channel B's input port. Okay? Yes, sir. Um, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, um, I just joined the class and, <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't really get a chance to be around oh. when you did this. We introduced Multisim last week. Sir, so you didn't, do, you, do you mind building this, rebuilding this um, setup for me while you're waiting on others to finish? Yeah. Sir, I have a okay. question, sir. Go ahead. Where did you get the 120 VRMS? So I, what that is, not, that's in a... Routine here. squared voltage, yeah, yeah, something with the AC wave, but I got Sources. one VPK. One VPK? So when you yeah, click AC like, power, by default, it drags out to peak, peak. It drags out to peak voltage. Um, okay, okay. Well, I mean, I'm gonna take the wrong from? component. I went, yeah. I went to place. Then I yeah. went into a AC, I believe, or something AC, and then um, I went down. So place to, component. Play, yeah. Sources, sources, sources. Yeah, and power. AC power. This this we did. Mm, no, I went to I went to master database, all families, and type in um AC voltage AC voltage. Uh, just just use use the regular databases, man. Use sources, power source, AC power, right? Uh, however, you should be able to click on it and change the parameters, right? Yeah, so mine, you can change the VRMS. So maybe you want 200 or something like that. You can go ahead and change that, right? Good. So I think it was Cleon. Yeah, Cleon. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank Good. You. So you know what a rectifier is, right? Yes, sir. Good. Convert AC into DC. Yeah. So what we're doing is building a rectifier. So how, how we do that is we, of course, drag out our AC source, which, as I said, you can come up here. This here is your schematic window, right? And essentially, multi-sim is just this tool that allows you to drag electrical components into the schematic window, simulate them, and see how they would operate. It's kind of like this virtual electronics lab to test stuff out, all right? So you can come up here to place component and place different components, or you can right click, place component and place different components. So in here, you can come to, right? This here should be a default setup where you will see master database, all groups, right? You come on into group, you click down, you'll see sources, you click sources, now you can, pull out that AC power source, sources, power sources, AC power source. You click OK, and then the AC power source will attach to your mouse, and you can drag and place that wherever you want to place it, right? So you place that here, great. Right. What else we need for this circuit? We also need a diode, so you come in here, right? All groups, right? On all groups, there's sources, there's basic, where you can get resistors, capacitors, inductors, and stuff from. But in the same drop down, there's also diodes. So you can click diodes. And here there's all kinds of different types of diodes, xenon diodes, LEDs, photodiodes, right? SRCs, diacs, triacs, VRACs, right? So we just want a regular diode. And the one we want, you can search for it here, the 1N4. 007G, right? And you click that and it'll attach up here. Right? Sure, you also want? Sure. 
about this diet why you can choose any other thing no because it it's it's a nice standard rectifier diet right okay okay one thousand volts one amp it has a good rating it's just standard you can use another diode if you want just need to make sure that this diode is rated for this particular operation right yes sir okay so after that you also want a, a small load so just basic resistor just any reasonable size resistor 220 ohm 1k should be fine as well you know sir so this reasonably is size sir. resistor I notice here oh. milli and kilo. This one set uh base. Yeah, so there's any any type you want, you should be able to find in here, right? So when you type one twenty, that's essentially like searching. So if I type two, it's gonna show me all the different resistors with the number two in it. So two twenty ohms. You can get a two twenty ohm resistor. The M is for milli and the K is for kilo. So if you want a 1K, we just press one and then K and we'll get that 1K resistor. So after you drag all your components, you just come to the ends and then you click and click, right? And you wire it up. And of course you want to place your ground. So you come over here, click place and then ground, or you can just navigate to sources, power sources, ground, right? And place your ground. Click OK and then just place your ground at the bottom there. Sir, you see the um the resistor. Well, well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't gonna build back the entire circuit. Like it's right here, right? So you can copy. Are you find um oscilloscope? <laughs> Oscilloscopes on the right hand side. Right. So there are two ways you can come simulate instruments and pick out oscilloscope from here. Just click it and and let's just click it and it's here. Oh, or you okay. can come here and uh, the third one, the fourth one is oscilloscope. You just click it and then it's here. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so, wait, repeat this step again. The fourth, the fourth one, oscilloscope. Drag it out, click, and that's it. So, when you click on it, it's a touch the mouse and just draw it yeah. in, in a position. Yeah. All right, sir. Did you do anything before this? Um, yeah. Already in the class. Yeah, resistors and stuff. It's it's the same thing that we did last week. We just kind of went over it again. I already sorry, uploaded where? the video to YouTube. Oh yeah. Um, when when would you upload this one? Are you already Soon. planning to upload this one? Soon. Soon. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks for going through that for me. So set up. Anyone else having trouble setting this stuff up? Sir, can you go back out to get the graph? How to get the graph? The out, yeah. So first you need to make sure you're you're doing an interactive simulation, right? So you go simulate analysis and simulation interactive, right? Click that and click run. Because some of you might still be locked into that whole um dc sweep analysis that we were doing so make sure you change back to interactive right when you're doing this or just start up a new window right a new design okay good then after that after you're running you open up you double click on your oscilloscope right you should see it should be black oh. like this and here if you want to turn channel A on, you just click zero and it'll turn it off. If you want to turn channel B off, you click zero as well and it'll turn both of them off, right? Here you adjust your times, your channels, your, your division widths, right? So you can see things differently, right? DC just centers the, um, the zero line so that your AC oscillates on it, right? This is DC coupling, AC coupling, something you'll learn about eventually, right? As you use oscilloscopes more. Okay. And then you should see the wave. And you click reverse. To me, white shows better. To you, black might show better. So whichever one you want, right? Okay.
And you can Third, always stop. The scale part is what was the ratio exactly? Is that a hundred volts or something? Hundred volts per division. So every one of these squares represents a hundred volts. So this is one twenty, right? So remember, V peak is slightly higher than RMS, right? So this here is 100 plus a little bit. So RMS should be like about 120. Agreed? Yes, sir. So how are we getting to change things from 200? The scale. Change, change what? The scale to 100. So you come, you hover over it, and you press up or down. Okay. Or you can type type in the value. Okay. Same thing with time, right? Come, you press up or down. Increase scale, decrease scale. Type in the value. Sir. Sir. Uh yeah, someone's saying something. Yeah, I uh I connect this circuit like how it should be, or I think I did, but I get in the simulation error. It's running good for a while, but then after that, it's starting to go into a simulation error. Okay. Sorry, run. It's running. It start it, stop it, and then look at your output and see if your output is right. And remember, you can use this this here to scroll back and forth, right? So if you end up with like something cut off, you can scroll back, and you can uh, turn. I get in some red square waves or something like that. Let me let me see. Just uh, show your screen. Share yeah, your screen. I, did, I, I did something wrong. Got to be though. Do you have a ground? No, forgot the ground. So why do you have to put a ground in your circuit all the time, sir? So grounds are important because you, you're grounding your circuit. Grounding ensures that everything is reference because reference to this to this one voltage right voltage is just a potential difference between one thing's electrical charge and another thing's electrical charge so by grounding we ensure that the circuit is reference to a ground if, if that makes sense so okay let's say we have one source here. This here is 10, 10 volts. Ten volts. So this here is your, your battery. Ten volts, right? And then here, some some line, some space, some wire, and then there's another battery, right? So some output. And this here is another 10 volts, right? 10 volts, 10 volts. If you were to put our multimeter across here, what are we gonna measure? 20 volts, right? 20 volts, right? If you were to put our multimeter across here and across here, right? Here to here would be 10 volts, here to here would be 10 volts, but overall would be 20 volts, right? So, Voltage is with reference to some low point, if that makes sense. Now, and the ground is giving the reference, yeah. Okay, okay. And alternatively, if we were to switch this around, like instead, let's say this here would be a positive multimeter, and this is our negative. Let me just do it in all the same. I keep drawing and I have multi here. 
multimeter. Boom. Okay. Place component sources, power sources, DC source. Boom. DC source, right? Set up its DC is voltage. Okay, it's here. Connect it up. What do you think this is going to read? 12 volts, right? It's going to read 12 volts. We know that because our supply is 12 volts. What if we turn the cable around? Right, what's, what's it going to read? In minus. Minus 12 volts. Why is that though? Right? Why is that? Change polarity. Well, not only that, it's just with reference to something, it's negative 12 volts, right? It's negative 12 volts. Okay, it's just, it's like, a, let's say we have some base point here. This here is five volts, right? This here, this line here is five volts. And then this line here is 20 volts, right? If we say, what's the voltage difference? What's the voltage across these two lines? This here is gonna be 15 volts, right? It's gonna be 15 volts because it's the potential difference in between these two, right? If we measure this with respect to some ground, right? Some zero volts, then it's gonna be 20 and this is gonna be five. So the ground, I know generally you expect to see a battery, right? A battery connected up to some bulb or something and you don't ground your circuit because internally the battery has a floating ground essentially. <clears throat> it might not connect to ground, but it has a floating ground, which is a, a thing that ties up all of the stuff in the system. So even your computer, like your computer, your laptop might not be connected up to ground, but inside, I'm sure there's some metal part, right? Some little metal part where some wire is connected to the frame of the laptop or to the board of the laptop. It's always some ground so that, so that with reference to something, these voltages are the same, right? So that we reverse this side. So let's say, uh, again, let's say zero. It's not just because we reverse the polarity. This is zero, this is 20. So this with reference to this is 20 volts, right? Right? But this with reference to this, let's say we're starting at um at 20 volts, right? Where is zero volts? This here is minus 20 from this 20 volts. So this here is kind of like a zero point, and this zero is minus 20 from that, right? It's not just the reverse of polarity, it's with reference to this. So this here is kind of like zero. And this is minus 20 from that. The same way if here was 40, right? And here was 20, then here, then this voltage with reference to this voltage would be minus 20, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Go back one more time, please. Yes, sir. Good. So this, let's say zero is the reference. Mm -hmm. With reference to zero, this is 20 volts, right? This here is going up plus 20, right? But let's say this was your reference. This was your zero point. This was your ground. Where is this? Where is zero point from that, right? That's negative 20 down, right? That's minus 20. Okay, so the same way you, you would be at 40 volts and this would be at 20 volts if we set this as ground, right? This 20 volts is not, is, wouldn't be, this wouldn't be 40 volts, this wouldn't be 20 volts. The voltage across here, depending on which reference to, could be minus 20 or it could be 20, right? Whether it's with ref, this with reference to that or that with reference to this. If this is ground, then this is minus 20. Even though this is 20 volts, with respect to this, it's minus 20. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Good. So the overall, so, the whole thing was 40. Yeah, with reference to true ground. Okay. True ground, 
Ready? True ground. With reference, true ground, zero volts, right? True ground. Let's call this um, a virtual ground. Right? A virtual ground. So this is true ground, zero volts. This is virtual ground, 40. So if we try and measure this 20 with respect to 40 volts, using 40 volts as our ground, <coughs> we'd end up finding the values minus 20. All right? Let's, let's do some batteries. Right, so the negative part, let's pretend as the ground and the positive part is with reference to something, right? So this here, let's put 40 volts, right? And let's copy this, okay? And then change this to 20 volts, All right? We're gonna need a resistor, a circuit. Boom. Simple circuit. Simple circuit. Connect the these two. Okay, good. Now let's say this is the ground. Okay. This here is the ground part, the 40 volts. And this here is the positive end, right? So with reference to that. So if you were to measure that, oh, it's minus 40. Uh, we need to set an actual ground. No. Stop this. This here is here and this and so there let's play it still gives us 40 um i'm trying to get this 20 volts so i kind of need to pull this out in a circuit actually but it's uh can't have them both in the same circuit because stuff is gonna happen. Let's have one circuit here. You can go ahead and remove the resistor. Let's play. Mm. Just give me a few seconds, let me figure out this circuit to explain why everything needs to grow. Okay. okay, good, so minus 20 volts. So now, the reason for this is because what we're doing here is taking this 40 volts as the reference. So with reference to this 40 volts, this 20 volts here is seen as minus 20. Even though this is 20 volts, this is 40 volts. With reference to that, it's seen as minus 20. If we change the reference from this minus 40 thing that we set up here, right? I know how to do a lot of maneuvering, to set this up as a reference, because generally we don't use sources as reference, right? We just use ground as reference, okay? But if we change it from being from 40 to 
just ground here. We press play. It's going to give us that 20 volts, right? So additionally, if we use the other circuits ground, if you use this other circuits ground, it should give it that same 20 volts as well, right? 20 volts as well. So we connect it to here and we're connected to this ground, which is a, this is a completely different circuit. But well, because we ground both of them off, this here is reference as 20 volts. Does that make sense? <coughs> Even though we're connecting this over to some completely different circuit? It's like 20 subtract from the far 10 left back with positive 20? No, 20 it's because we're connecting zero. it to ground. It's because you're connecting uh. it to ground. So here's, this here is connected to ground. This whole line is ground. This is your ground line. So this way you can just give 20 from the other circuit and this is it. Yeah, with reference to that. So if we change the oh. reference, so if we change the reference, again, if we change the reference to this positive 40 here, that setup, let's play, we're going to get minus 20, right? Because 40, 40, Forte is all the way at the top here. 20 is at the bottom here. So remember, we'd usually start at zero and then we'd go up to 20, right? But if we had to start at 40, this is your virtual ground, right? Your make-believe ground. To get to 20, we'd actually have to go downwards, right? right? So we'd have to go down minus 20, right? So potential difference-wise from here to here, is minus 20, right? Assuming this is the ground instead of zero, which is actual ground. Okay? Okay. Good. So ground your circuit so that when we're check, whether we're checking this voltage here, this voltage here, it's, it's all zero, <laughs> right? It's good practice to always ground your circuit. Even, even like setting up a battery circuit, a simple, internally within the battery from the, the positive terminal to the negative terminal. The negative terminal is essentially the ground and the voltage from the positive terminal with respect to that negative terminal should give you that, that voltage you're looking for in the battery. If the battery is a nine volts or something. And even then, you still want to ground your circuit in case there are any things like any mishaps or something like that that would cause your circuit to malfunction, some kind of overproduction occurrence, some kind of shortage. You don't want that going back into your battery. So like a battery, if I don't know if you ever did this, but if you connect a wire from the positive end straight to the negative end without any load in between, your battery either sparks if it's big enough or it gets really hot. And getting really hot, it might explode, spark, cause a fire and something like that. So for your circuits, you wanna ground them so that when they short occurs, it flows to ground, right? In the case of your computer, when that short occurs, it, it would flow to your case, your computer case or something. And that's also why they say, put your hand on the outside of the computer case, right? Because when you're opening a computer, kind of going off on a tangent for this thing, but ground is super important, right? When you're opening your computer case, right? This is your computer case. They say, so this is you, put your hand on the outside. Right, that's one hand, is your other hand. Before you touch anything on the inside. The reason for that is because you want you, your body, let's say you had some minor static charge, of 0 0.02 millivolts. Your body your acting as the ground? Yeah. So, you, and your PC had some charge of 0 volts, right? If you were to go touch this, touch a component at 0 volts, you're going to be sending 0 0.02 volts. You're going to be creating 0 0.02 millivolts. You're going to be creating a potential difference and sending current, right? Some, some small amount of amps into certain components and, and causing them to blow, 
as a result of static electricity. But by putting your hand on the case of the PC, right? By putting your hand on the case of the PC, the entire PC now changes from zero volts to 0 0.02 millivolts as well. That essential reference. So both you and the PC are on the same level. So when you touch it with your other hand, you're not, you're not having any potential difference. Because what's the difference of 0 0.02 millivolts from 0 0.02 millivolts? What's the difference? Zero, no difference, right? So no static electricity is going gonna, is gonna to burn any components, right? Make sense? Because mm -hmm. you might just be build, walking around building up charge. And that's also the same concept with electrostatic wristbands, right? Let me... Google it, show you guys what it is. <clears throat> when you're working with networking equipment, maybe you want to go into telecoms or something, you usually have a band you put on. And this band, we would clip or plug into the thing we're working on, maybe a big server rack. So you clip, clip onto that server rack, right? Or sometimes it's like a plug-in thing, like a like a you know like a headphone jack or something you just kind of plug in right or clip on something like this like different kind of mechanism but essentially to connect you up to the thing so that there is no potential difference in between right okay good so with all that said ground is important yeah ground is important <laughs> okay so you can build up these two little circuits too and try to experiment out for yourself and try at different points, right? And now, but I want you guys to do the rectifier. So is everyone done with the rectifier or are you guys still going, so struggling? They're finished. We're finished. Have you finished or you, because you had a problem, right? Yeah, I finished, sir. I had to put the ground inside. Good. and your um your waveform looks good right you can stop mm -hmm. and sc scroll through and press zero to turn one off and dc turn the other one back on right Wait, so you can, can press zero to turn one off yeah so you can see the square wave the um the half wave alone right half wave i i, I i'm seeing a square wave you know sir square wave like as a square wave, like 120 VRMS, 60 Hertz, one in 470. Like, like square wave like this. Like that? Yeah, something like that, but I'm not seeing the top, so I'm only assuming it's a square wave. Oh, adjust your uh, your the voltage division here, up and down. 100 volts, 100 volts. You're seeing something like this. 100 volts by 100 volts. And something like that. Yeah. So turn it up to 100 volts. Tile A and B? Yeah, both them, because this is 120. So you kind of want to see the whole wave. All right, I've seen a sine wave, a big one and a small one. Yeah, so turn off channel A now. Press zero on channel A. Press zero, and you should small see channel sine wave. Good, just this one here. Just this half rectified wave. It isn't so big like that, but yeah. Okay, well, you can adjust the time scale as well, right? You can do like this. Okay. Up and down, adjust the scale, however you like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what time is it? It's two o'clock. We started at twelve. Yeah, I think that's enough. Friday we can go do um full wave rectification with the transformer without the transformer. And uh, um, maybe some some other analysis. Maybe try an AC sweep with different frequencies. All right.
yeah, so that's all I have for you guys. If, if the circuit is working good, go ahead and try out your potential different setup. Right? Just set up your 20 volts with just any size load and ground, 40 volts, any size load and ground. Okay. And then just try measuring different voltages and see what happens, right? And you can change these values as well. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, mathematics people, electrical people that want to do mathematics and mechanical people that want to, that uh, joined the tutorial as well. You guys uh, want a tutorial this afternoon or are you guys good with matrices? I know your test is day 28. Tutorial. Okay, to cover matrices? Yeah. All right, uh, so um, it's mostly the um, the further problems you guys want to cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Any particular one? Like you no? could like do some. Well, I don't know, but for me, you could like use like let me walk in the Gaussian and the I and like practice then like just practice. Oh, practice okay. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Augmented okay. coefficient matrix. Which one? The augmented coefficient one. Oh, with the Ga Gaussian elimination. All right, good. So and, uh, three o'clock. Sure. Yes, yeah, three o'clock. And I have a question with the Simulink assignment, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, the question is, right, um, where do we have to put our group member's name in the script file or in documentation file? In documentation, documentation is going to be maybe like a Word document or something. Yeah. So basically, it's three files we got sent to you, the .m, the .slx, and the Word. Yeah, I maybe I uh, wrote it wrong in the uh, as well as written documentation. Yeah, so true files, script file, model SLX, and written documentation. You guys got in Trudeau? Uh, no, it's, sir, but I'm going to try again. With Simulink? You guys aren't? Yeah. The six of you in a group though, so you guys should be able to. Somebody should know similarly. <laughs> so All right. You, you guys, uh, w what do you need help with? Like, sir, how you just um, like you know the functions on of the block them and simulink like, from forget from workspace to simulink or from simulink to the workspace or a function the function block in simulink. How we have to create a new function within the MATLAB stuff. Sorry, it's complicated. So, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, well, research. It's six years. Do, do, yeah. So, you, you got the basic, um, the, I think we did a temperature converter. You got that working, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, good. So, it's just a matter of maneuvering through that array to get you different outputs. And there, there are examples online as well. So you can look at those, see how- with, The example with the online is things with uh, um, flight aviation and- Yeah, more. no, no, I'm not talking just from the MATLAB documentation, the MATLAB, um, like the original MATLAB program, the those example examples. I'm talking about like, um, maybe from the textbook as well that I sent you guys, maybe they might have some Simulink in there. Um, like some YouTube channels that cover different systems, right? All right, I'll figure, I'll figure it out. Yeah, you know, blogs, maybe, maybe even research papers. And uh, like, for example, I have this book. Electrical Machines with MATLAB. Right, it doesn't just use MATLAB, it uses Simulink as well, right? And it teaches you how to use Simulink with MATLAB and, and get certain things done. So, email <laughs> you want me to email you this entire textbook? Yes, so what do you mean? Everything, every little source, con resource, con okay. I think this is some specific Simulink. Stuff. Um, no, no, power electronics. Let me see. No, oh, and oh, you can learn you. about rectifiers in here as well. 
any documentation we need to list what what the group members doing or what what no no just stop uh, just you know focus on what is your simulation do right, right how does it work what does each component do how do you utilize that information in matlab in your program in your script file maybe you do some calculations on it or maybe your simulink model does the calculations for you it's just explaining what, what, what your thing does. All I need is like your group members and their names. I don't really know, need to know who did what, right? Oh, so basically you don't, really, you don't necessarily have to do a calculation in MATLAB. It can be either in MATLAB or similar, but these have to show some- Yeah, you, might, you could use MATLAB just to interact with the user, uh, print a graph or something like that. All right, I got, no, I get ideas, sorry, thanks. Okay, good, well, it, it's true. The 25th, are you guys good with that deadline or do you want to make it extended? I mean, that's all you could extend it. Like a 3D extra, you know. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll... You guys have match test on the 28th. Let's make it the second. Okay, thank I'll... you, sir. All right, good. So it's the second, right? Tell your group members. Right? All right, good. Second is it. Sir, just clarifying, this is assignment four, right? Yeah, this is assignment four. Assignment okay. three was your personal MATLAB stuff. Yes, sir. Good. All right. See you guys at three o'clock for.